So we're working through uh, this book, The Go Programming Language by Donovan and Koenig, whatever his name is. And we're on page 17, and we're doing exercise 1.7, and we're supposed to take the function call to IO copy destination, so function call to IO util read all. Uh, the function call to IO reads from source, use it instead of read all to copy the response body to standard out. So we're going to use it instead of read all to comp copy the response body to standard out. So up here, we're taking OSRGs1, and these will be, it looks like, URLs, and we're going to range over them and get a URL. This will actually be, yeah, this will be a slice. This will be the URL index value. And then get URL and get a response, and then we could read the response body. And if we look at the response body, the body is a read closer. And if we look at a read closer, a read closer is a writer and a, re a reader and a closer. And so with a reader and a closer, we could read it. And if we look at, uh, if we look at uh, io.copy, let me just save that, uh, io.copy, and we've got io there. If we look at copy, it, re it returns the bytes written and an error. So we have error col and bytes written in and error colon equal io copy and then it wants uh, it wants here io copy wants us to have a desk uh, a writer and a reader so the reader is the second one and that's the source and so we're going to have the response uh, destination bos dot standard out and we'll have the reader be response body Response body, and so standard out. If we look at standard out, standard out is right here, and it's a new file. And so a new file gives us a pointer to a file, and a pointer to a file is a struct. And when we have a pointer to a file, I think it's just easier to go to package OS. Uh, when we have a pointer to a file. We have um, we have all these methods here, including read, which makes it implement the reader interface, and including write, which makes it implement the writer interface. And so that's important because IO copy wants a writer. So standard out is a file. A file has the reader interface and the writer interface. And since copy wants a writer, we could pass a standard out there. And a response body is a, a read closer, which means that um, if it's a read closer, it's a reader. And if it's a reader, it's implementing the read interface. And so for uh, IO copy, it wants a reader there, so we could pass in the response body. So we're copying the response body to standard out. Uh, if we wanted to, we could font.println the number of whatever was written. Was it number of bytes written? Written in 64 and um, it returns the number of bytes copied, number of bytes copied. And then we could check our error and so if error is not equal to nil. And so here we could look at this. We're in main. We're not a function returning anything. And we want to think about how we handle this error. So does our program need to shut down if we weren't able to copy? It's kind of the end of our program, right? So we could shut our program down, but we, we want some uh, information about that. And, um, you know, so I could get an error. And I could do font.errorf, which returns an error for me. And I could say, uh, couldn't copy using io.copy and here's the error percent %w and then I'll pass in that error there to percent %w and then I that gives me back an error and so now I'm just reassigning it uh, with more information and now I could font dot print line the error or I could log dot print 
print line the error, or I could panic and give it the error, but I've got more information. And in our course, which we're doing, so this course here, Web Architecture Fundamentals with Go, myself and my friend Daniel Hoffman, who's a professional developer, um, when we talk about errors, let me just take a look at best practices here. Actually, this one here, this introduction, and then we'll also zoom to best practices. Uh, shut your program down, so it's one way you could do it. Don't just return your error, wrap your error in more detail re than return the error. Error should be handled just once. Only panic if you need your program to shut down. You can print to the command line with log or fump, so you can log all that or fump. And, um, and so we're just doing the panic, but I think maybe log panic would be better. So if we had a logger, we're actually logging there and then just down here we'll look at um, we had a little bit of a summary where we said similar stuff yeah adding flint error wrapping errors abstract away errors okay that's good so um, uh, log we'll do log panic save it there we go and so we no longer need the read all and the response body we still want to close that when we're done with it and um, if error is not nil, uh, fump pr f printf, standard error, fetch reading this, and then osx at one, that's kind of a nice way, and then format print, uh, and so there. And if we wanted to, I think that close also returns an error. So close, when you call it, returns an error. So if we wanted to be thorough in our error handling, we could say, hey, here's an error. And if this error, and so here, right, we're just reassigning instead of short declaration because there's no new variable declared. And by declared, I meant ends declared here, errors declared here. But down here, we already have a variable error. We are in its scope, so we're just redeclaring whatever this error might be. And if this error is not nil, and I'm going to change this because this was code that was written before Go 1.13. And so I'm going to make this uh, error f. And uh, using W is, um, is a special, and I'm going to assign that to error. Using W allows you to, when you do that, allows you to wrap your errors. And so that allows you to use is and as if you need to. And, um, and I'm just going to make that a W right there. And then I'm going to uh, log dot print line that error and because standard out log and uh, and then we could OS exit I could log dot panic and I think panic see what panic is equivalent to print followed by call to panic <laughs> and uh, where do I find panic easiest ways maybe just do this and package built-in built-in Panic uh, calls normal execution of the current Go regime. When a function calls panic, normal execution stops. Any functions whose functions was deferred by f are run in the usual way. Then f returns its caller to the caller g. The invocation of f then behaves like a call to panic, terminating g. This continues until all functions have stopped in reverse order. At that point, the program is terminated with a non-zero exit code. This termination sequence is called panicking, can be controlled by the built-in function. And so we have here OSX at 1, right? So kind of similar to uh, a panic. It's a non-zero exit code. And if we look at OS exit, OS exit causes the current program to exit with a given status code. Conventionally, code 0 indicates success, non-zero and error. The program terminates immediately. Deferred functions are not run. For portability, status code should be in the range 0 to 125. And so uh, maybe if we looked at, that's in rock.go. I'm just wondering if there's somewhere, somewhere that gives us uh, OS exit codes. Might be an interesting thing to Google like 1 versus 2 versus 3. What's the difference? But anyhow, this is also a fine way to handle it, but I could also just as well do panic error like I did up above. And so I'm just taking time to um, share that information. Airstring should not 
be capitalized or end with punctuation uh, or a new line. Go Lent. Okay. No new lines? Good. There we go. So I'm taking time to uh, share that because I've, you know, with Daniel, we recently did this deep dive into errors. And a lot of times you don't see people handling errors well. And so we, uh, you know, I just want to start making an example of using Fumped RF, which should be standard practice, and then thinking about what I do with it at this point. You know, at this point, if we can't close the body, I'm going to say uh, couldn't close, couldn't close response body. Reading S. Error. All right, so now I need to pass in some URLs and watch this print the results out to terminal. Wow, this has been a long video. 11 minutes, not too bad. And this is a print working directory CD 054, go run main.go, and https colon whack whack www.google.com. And so it went and got everything at Google and then printed all that out to my standard out. But what would happen if I asked it to go get Google's? I don't know what it's going to do. It's just hanging. I don't know if it'll eventually time out or if we look at our code, get a URL gives me a response, uh, doesn't give an error, if error is this, oh, here we go, uh, fetch, uh, get HPS Google's dial TCP lookup Google's no such host exit status one, um, and so fetch, get HPS no such host, so, you know, we might get a little bit more explicit in there, oh, here is, uh, here's what it returned, here's our error, F, Fump uh, fprintf, and so we could work on that error, and I'm just going to bring this up here to kind of follow this, and uh, couldn't get, couldn't get, and there's the error, couldn't get uh, URL, so that's going to be a percent %s, and we'll put the URL. Right, that's the value we get there. So get URL, couldn't get that URL. Here's there, and then we're gonna log panic. There was OS exit. Let's see what it looks like now. I don't know why it takes so long before it times out. And so here, uh, what's the difference in there? Here's, uh, couldn't get hbsgoogles.com. Here's the error. And so here's the error. And panic gives us this other stuff. And so the difference between panic, right? And there's exit status too. Panic printed out this other stuff. Versus without panic, is a little bit cleaner. So before we had OS exit one, so we could just do log print line error and try an OS exit one. Just see the difference. So you didn't get quite as much that time, just different. So that kind of spirit of uh, adventure and exploration of playing with stuff. This is why, like, you know, hold on. How often do you see this in a program or class?
So you heard me like, oh, cut, cut, you know, a couple of times. It was like every day you want to play the guitar, you got to play the guitar. And every day you want to uh, code, you got to code. So you do it every day, then eventually you get better and better and better, whether it's guitar or coding. That's the takeaway.